Welcome back. We have just given Cirrus the fifth red page, and contrary to what he told us before, there's actually another one, apparently here on Mist itself, hidden behind the fireplace. Where there is also another blue page, and apparently a green book that, according to Cirrus, will trap us if we use it. Which uh, would not be a good thing. Cirrus's um, explanations uh, shed some light on the events here, although it's mostly things that we had already figured out. And while I am inclined to agree with his description of his brother, I do not believe Cirrus is innocent in these uh, affairs. The evidence from Channel would clearly suggest that the two of them were working together. But I guess um, we should go and get the blue page and hear what Cirrus has to say before we think about getting that final red page and maybe setting Cirrus free. At least if there is another blue page behind the fireplace, that means that we won't set um, Akinar free if we give him the blue page from Channelwood, which uh, is a good thing, I suppose. When we finally find out what uh, the fireplace and that book of combinations is for. So let's go and get that... Uh, uh, blue page from Channel Wood to get double the insanity for the same price. Actually, um, there's something else I want to check out. We found the other half of the note, and it said that there is a vault that can be opened by turning all of the marker switches on, which we've already done, and then turning the one on the dock off. I wonder if that reveals something important that might help us with our decision. Well, it opened the vault. And inside it is... looks to be another page. Is that a... a note or another? No. A white page. We haven't seen any white books. Well, I guess we'll leave this here until we find a white book. Sirius said the book behind the fireplace is, was green, didn't he? Hmm. And closes the vault again. Well, we'll keep that in mind in case we do see a white book. Man, I was kind of hoping there would be something there to help us decide what to do with these brothers, because... I don't really want to set either of them free. But a white page for a white book that we don't know isn't really uh, of any use. Wait a second, didn't Cirrus in the message to Akinar he left say take only one page? That combined with the fact that the, uh, the two brothers had the two pieces of the note describing how to open the vault leads me to believe that maybe that one page is the white page we just saw, but what was it for? What were they planning to do with it? And what does it have to do with uh, Atrus, who may or may not have murdered? Notice again, by the way, that Cirrus has still not said anything about Atrus being murdered. It's only Akinar who keeps repeating that. Cyrus only said that Atrus presumably perished in his quest to find out which of the brothers was guilty while both of them were imprisoned. Okay, I'm going to want to go back... Uh up the tree, or down the tree, actually, to go back to the channel with H to get that blue page.
And since we have the opportunity, I'd kind of like to go up and take the uh, take in the view from this tree. There we go. Note you can still get out from there, but not from any higher. We can look down, which is kind of neat. Better not do this if you're afraid of heights. There's a clock tower. And it seems we've reached the top. Too bad we can't look around here. We can only look... Uh, forward. Would have been nice to get a view of the library from this vantage point, but we can't. Also, we seem to be stuck up here. Can't climb down! Maybe this button will help. It lowered us one step. And then we ro rose back up. I guess we need to repeatedly press that. Yes. Oh, we can't go any further down using the button. And our tree will go back up, of course. So, same procedure as before. We need to turn the gas, gas off. And then we will be able to go back down with the tree to the channel wood linking book. There we go. Let's get in. And get down. There we are! Let's go and find us a blue page, shall we? You really can't see that there's a third level from... Yeah, well, you can sort of see, I think, one of the bedrooms in the beginning. On the third level. Bit hard to spot, though. I'm just gonna wait for it to loop around, because it doesn't take that long. It's hard to see if this is on the second or the third level. I think that is the third level, actually. But sure of it, I am not. Because this is our second visit to Channelwood, it's time to look at the map. Things would be looking up if you weren't down here. I guess so. This map is actually the least useful of all of them, I think, because it doesn't distinguish between the three levels. It just gives you one big top-down view. Uh, you can sort of make it out, though, but uh, if you don't already have at least some idea of what the levels look like, it's a bit confusing. The sort of white pathways are the uh, bottom level, where it starts at the windmill, of course. Let's pick it inside. And then leads to the winding staircase, and through here, this is sort of obscured by, uh, I think, Cyrus's room on the third level. And there's the elevator to the second level. The telescoping pipe, elevator to the mist book, and that's where the sunken bridge is. And the second level, then, we started here, and... You can see that that's the dead end. Then you can go like that. And then over here, not indicated on the map, is the switch necessary to open the uh, winding staircase. And then through here, one can go to the winding staircase. And then the third level is this pathway leading to Cyrus's bedroom. And then this leads to um, the altar, and Akinar's bedroom. So yeah, this map is not that useful. 
the maps uh, that are in the official strategy guide are a lot better because um, there are actually three maps there one for each level and I used the one for the uh, second level when I was uh, on the second level during the video which is a lot uh, more helpful if you're having trouble navigating this edge. Alright, let's go and get a blue page to see what Aknar has to add to what we already know. It's kind of ironic that Atreus was apparently brought down by his sons after he defeated his father all those years ago. Atreus' plan had been to destroy his father's linking book to Dunny, then link off Riven, making sure his linking book was destroyed as well as he did so, leaving Gen trapped on Riven with no way out. But just as he made to do so, Gen knocked him out, and when he came to, he was bound in the temple, where his father was about to marry Catherine. Atreus was shocked at this apparent betrayal from his beloved Catherine, and then tricked by Gen into revealing that he had fixed Riven, that he had altered the descriptive book to undo the instability that threatened to destroy the island. Gen was pleased at that, as it turns out, that had been his intention all along, and it appeared as though Catherine was in on it. Unexpectedly, however, the sky turned dark, the earth shook, and cracks appeared in the ground. Atreus didn't understand why that would happen. In resulting confusion, he and Gen struggled to get the two linking books, his own and Gen's, only to find that Catherine had taken them and now threatened to destroy them both if Gen did not release Atreus. Catherine cast both of the books into the f one of the fiery chasms and fled with Atreus. She then revealed to him that this was all going according to the plan that she had made together with Anna. Anna, as you may remember from the bit of the Book of Atreus that I read at the start, had followed Atreus into Dunny to keep an eye on him, and when she went to confront Gen after Atreus' failed escape attempt, found Catherine instead. Anna had encouraged Catherine to make some additional changes to Riven, and it was those changes that were responsible for the current chain of events, as well as the appearance of several large daggers. Atreus followed Catherine to another crack in the earth, but unlike, unlike the others, this one was not filled with fire, but with stars, another uh, byproduct of the changes Catherine had made. Catherine gave Atreus a linking book back to Mist, which she used herself, leaving Atreus alone with Gen. Gen tried desperately to convince Atreus to give him another chance and not trap him here on, li on Riven, but Atreus simply stepped into the Starfisher, using the book as he fell. And the Mist book? It continued falling into that starry expanse of which he had only a fleeting glimpse. Which brings us full circle back to the beginning of Mist. Atreus, of course, married Catherine and went to live on Mist, which, as it turns out, was actually written by Anna, not Catherine. They had two sons, and it seems that those sons had now become their undoing. I'm not entirely sure how the elevator goes back down. I guess maybe it's timed, or there's some kind of trigger linked to the book. I'm not sure. It's a good thing it does, though, because otherwise we'd be stuck on the second way, and uh, the second time through. So let's head back to Mist. Where we will give Agnar his um, fifth blue page in the next video.